Welcome back to another episode of Amplify Ambition. I'm super excited for today's guest who is a human design coach, but also a professional development specialist. And so she's going to help us connect how we know ourselves in an authentic manner to the work that we're doing every single day. And so welcome to the show, Natalie. Oh, thank you, Kristen, for having me. I'm excited to be here and share with you and your audience. Thank you. So before we dive into what we do, what you do and what got you started, I think it's really important for us to, you know, bring all of who we are to the surface. So what's something that you're really passionate about that's not necessarily a part of the business or the brand that you operate? Well, I mean, <clears throat> something that's a part of me and has been for a long time is my interest in intuitive development. And I'm um, also, I'm uh, sensitive and highly empathic. And that wasn't really something that you put out there in the business world. It, it is now or becoming more of that. But 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you didn't talk about that. So that's something that has been a part of my journey. And then I, the tools that I've learned and the education I've had around that, I use that with myself and my clients. Yeah, I think, you know, there's so many parts of us that you were just never allowed to bring into the workplace. And so it's now, it's nice to see that it's changing, you know, currently. Um, I mean, there again, you, you couldn't even tell people you were like a parent in the workforce because you were scared of what they thought about women. And so I can only imagine, um, you know, not just the external struggle, but even the internal struggle of how much do I share or disclose about that? But now you do get to actually literally bridge those two things together in the work you do. So thanks for sharing that. So I'd love to hear, you know, what led you to the work that you're doing, you know, bringing human design into professional development. I'd love to kind of hear your own personal journey and how you turn that around to now help clients. Yeah, my personal journey is, is exactly, you know, one thing led to another and led to another. But just to be really transparent, in my late 20s, I realized that I was depressed a lot. <laughs> and it was just like, I couldn't, you know, it's like enough of this. And so I started reading self-help books. And I kept reading and kept reading and really got into, you know, the psychology and then some of the alternatives um, you know, into mysticism and things like that. And so um, when I uh, kept, I kept following that path. And when I was applying for sales job, that was like in my late twenties. And then in my early thirties, I applied for some sales jobs and the people that were replying to me were people that were in motivational training or sales or professional development because they said people that had my kind of interest, that's who they wanted. And so I just ended up in this arena of motivational speakers and professional development and coaches. And so I got very well trained in you know, what professional development was and how people make changes and, you know, what motivates one person doesn't motivate someone else and how to create your own personal brand. And I mean, it just all was just, that was my, that was where I got hired. It wasn't any real intentional, like, oh, I want to work for a motivational speaker. <laughs> Never crossed my mind. It just kind of happened. Yeah. And you've worked with some of the, you know, big names in the industry. And so obviously being able to learn from the people that most of us admire, and we're reading their books and watching their, you know, speeches and stuff as well. So for you to be not only working in sales for them, but to really just be in that atmosphere all the time, personal development just becomes kind of the, the norm, I guess, for you. Yeah. Well, I lived in San Diego at the time, which is kind of a Mecca for a lot of you know, sales trainers and some of the big names uh, that live there. And yeah, it, it was, it was an amazing education and opportunities of to, just to be in the room with, you know, there was the office scene and there was a lot going on in the office, but then to actually be able to go to the events and participate and support people in them. Yeah. So it was a complete submersion into personal and professional development. 
Yeah, that's really cool. Um, and so as you kind of transitioned out of, you know, working for those specific companies, how did you end up starting your own business? Well, I started my own coaching practice. Um, whatever job I had kind of ended and I really loved coaching. And then I hired coaches that had a coaching practice that were teaching me how to set it up and and um, how to organize a session. And so I, I reached out to people, individuals that got helped me get started. And that was maybe one or two years before I found human design. Not that not that long after I found human design. And when I found human design and went, oh my gosh, I can really help people now. This is so specific. And there's so uh, some changes that people can make that will get them greater results once they kind of understand some of the basics of how they're wired, who they are and who they're not. So it, it was a bit of a, you know, that was, was the real thing. And then interesting with human design, you know, people, friends that knew me or, you know, they would ask me to look at their chart and interpret it. And then um, people asked me, well, can I call you back in a month? Could you coach me? I want to see how this is going. So it was just kind of serendipitous a lot of it which is really how my chart is wired so it's authentic for me that things happen very serendipitously when I don't let when I don't get in my own way well we all kind of get in our own way sometimes yes. but at least you're aware of that so that you can get out of your own way um, and help people and so you're mentioning how again you were learning about coaching, um, building your, your own coaching practice, and then you found human design to connect all of that. For people who might not be familiar with human design, if you can just unpack that a little bit more, what is it? How do they understand it? How do they find out their own type? Sure. Yeah. Well, almost everybody's heard of astrology and know that, you know, astrology is based on your birth information and just like numerology. So, and, and then there's the Enneagram, which is also a typology. So I call Enneagram like more traditional and the disc system because working in sales, I had had all the typology done to me um, to find out how to make me a better salesperson um, in the early years. And so human design is a typology. It's just not traditional. It's based on people's birth information. And particularly, it's really important that people know their time of birth. So their, their, their date, their time and their location. And like astrology, it pulls up a matrix, uh, a chart. And then um, because of my training, then I know how to interpret that because um, it can look a little overwhelming at first or boy, that's a lot of information. And for me, it's just like, oh, but this goes with this and that goes with that. And, you know, um, so just really um, because I've been into it. So this is like, uh, what was that 1999 when I first found human design? We're now in 2025. So I've been in the education and the experiment and the teaching and the mentoring for a long time. So it's really, I've learned how to simplify it for people in a way, whether I have five minutes or an hour with someone, it's like, I can, I've ha and because I, I love giving practical solutions, I want to give you something that you can go away and use it and see if that works for you. You don't have to believe me. It's not a religion. It's it's a system of knowledge that, of course, we can study it if we want, but the, where the rubber meets the road, and I think in my own journey, it's like, well, what really gets results? And if I if I follow these strategies, because it does give us a strategy of how to use this information, um, then what happens? It's like each person gets to individualize it. And just one that just brings me, um, you know, what's called the science of individuality. There is a science background um, to it and um, using the planets and using 
the I Ching hexagrams. There's 64 I Ching hexagrams and 64 codons of our DNA. So it's really an imprint of our DNA. And um, and so if someone ever told me that I would be an expert in I Ching in my early years, I would have said, you got to be kidding me. But <laughs> I am. <laughs> yeah. Uh, over the years, it's it's evolved. So it's really an imprint of our DNA. You know, it's like you're each person has their own specialized thumbprint. Each person has their own individualized uh, human design chart. Got it. If you can go through the different types in human design and kind of just a quick, you know, super high level of like what each type is and kind of a way to identify, obviously, again, they can look it up their chart based on their birth, but, you know, I know I'm a projector, but like, how would you define that versus um, a manifesting generator at any of the other types? Yeah, sure. Well, so when we come to human design and if anybody is listening and they're like, what is this? And they go online, they can get a free chart and it's going to give you some of the key words and it's going to say what your type is. And there's four major types, but kind of five. <laughs> I was trained under four and I won't go get into all that specifics, but some people teach it as five different types. And um, so each of these, what it means by a type, it's like, um, you know, when we incarnate, uh, we have a particular within human design. It's like how to, how do you, how do you use this energy that you have? And so type gives you a guideline for that. So the four major types, I'm just going to say them once. And then I'll go back, but the the there's the manifester, uh, there's the projector, uh, there's a generator, and then there's a manifesting generator, which they're related, and uh, the reflector, which is the most rare. So the manifester, another word for that would be the initiators. We want to say, well, how do, what is a what does a manifester do in business? A manifester is the initiator. They're the ones that can get things going. They're very innovative. They um, they're uh, very independent, but yet they need support because their job is to get things going, and they're not the ones that can actually support it. Um, and they're only 7% of the population. The projector that you are is about 20%. And another word for them in business would be a coordinator. So um, projectors are the ones that um, they're very wise then and um, have access to seeing things that others don't see and how to how to bring things together and, and they're very focused on uh, success so how do we get these people to work together or get this project to work that it's they're very like let's move this along but it has to be successful and um so you can, but yet they have to have someone kind of bring that out of them in a way. And um, they, they uh, do best when they really focus on what it is that they love. I know we all should do that, but a projector, you know, it's like, what's your expertise? So that's part of one of your questions and no wonder <laughs> a projector would ask that. And then there's generators, which is um, 35%, 30 to 37. There's pure generators. And uh, I'm a pure generator, but we're, but we're considered the builders. Like we're the one that has sustaining energy and can move things along. So not a manifester, not so good to try to get something going that hasn't already started or something that's, that, um, they're that comes from you know they're responding to life they're and they can really carry it and and go step by step where the other two types we've just talked about they're not so interested in that but the generator wants okay now we got this brick in the wall and now what's the next thing and the next thing 
And um, the manifesting generators are, um, they're the specialist, another word for them. They have amazing energy. They like to skip steps. They're very efficient. They're very action oriented. And um, the last one is the reflector, which is 1% uh, of the planet, very unique. And they, um, they're like the judge. They're like, they know everything that's going on and they, they're the very, very wise beings. So I'll, I'll stop at that because I know we got our time. Yeah, no, I think it's, it, it's it's a nice, helpful overview. I mean, even listening to you to you talk, you know, I'm like, I know exactly. Again, I already knew I was a projector, but even thinking of like the name of this podcast is Amplify Ambition. I'm like, oh, wow, I'm such a projector as I hear you, you know, describe it. And so I think it's really important though um, once you know your type, and I've said this about the Enneagram just as much, I think I can, you know, say it's it's the same for human design is once you know your type, it's just like this door gets opened and you're like, here's where I'm going. It makes so much sense. Like there's no need for me to try to be like someone else because the stuff that's so natural for me is literally where your expertise is sitting. It's just like, that's easy for you. And there's so many people that are like, why would I start a business? Doesn't everyone know it? No, it's easy for you. 90% of the rest of the world has no idea what you're talking about. And so how do you get to share, you know, your, your stories, your journey, your expertise in a way that makes sense for you. And it's funny because I'm hearing you talk about the projector things. I'm like, how do you add to the bottom line in a way that still, you know, is true for you? Can you build, can you connect people? What is it that makes sense? For how you're naturally wired and stop trying to bend and mold into something that's not your natural self. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, it just, like you said, the door opener, it's like things that you knew about yourself, but nobody had said those words or said it in that way or gave you permission. It's like, oh, I really am like that. Oh, mm -hmm. that really does work for me. Yeah. <laughs> so those so, kinds of things start firing off for people and they start making changes. Yeah. And I, I think it's exactly that is that when you start to have that like vocabulary around this is who I am, you give yourself the permission that you've probably needed for 10 or 20 years, but then you start to say, all right, let's move forward in this direction that really makes sense for just who I am and how I can help the world. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for explaining human design. You know, again, people can um, literally kind of Google it and find a way to their own human design chart. But I think something that you brought to my attention was the genius report. And so I'd love for you to kind of share what the genius report is and how people can take that knowledge and then, you know, hit their next level of gold and success, especially as we're still in the early parts of the year. You know, how do I make sure that as I look six, 10, 12 months down the line, I am seeing the success that I want for my life and for my business. Sure, absolutely. Well, you know, because when I learned human design in the early years, it was like for personal development. But then as it evolved and I continued my education, there's an aspect of it for professional development. And uh, the tool that I use for professional development, and this can be for career changes or executives or, um, you know, anyone that just wants to get greater results in their business. They just want to talk to me about their business um, is the genius report and um, that it really breaks it down. Like, how are you as a negotiator? you know, how do you deal with competition? What's your main talent? Um, how do you deal with money? Like what's your unique way and authentic for you to deal with money? So it, it, it takes, it's um, like a, a summary of all the topics that, you know, and, and within the matrix of human design, they've taken the parts out so that it is professional language. That makes sense. And I think that's, sometimes a disconnect of so many people is they think of this self-help personal development, maybe even like a health and fitness routine. And then they completely disconnect their professional growth. And it's like, no, those two things can all go together. Like let's figure it out. And so I think this is a great tool 
how you work with other people, how you kind of resonate with money, so many things that we're thinking about on a business level. So um, before we go back to the Genius Report and kind of unpack that a little bit more, you know, now that people are like, okay, I know what human design is, I know there's a way to connect this to the work that I'm doing. What are some of those rules for success that you share with your clients so that they, you know, are able to kind of sustain, not just do this one time, but really sustain it on a long-term growth plan? Well, I think the key to success, and we're just, you know, seeing this more and more, it's like, whether it's the Enneagram or some other typology, or if you, you know, human design resonates with you, it's like, know it, not like you have to study it for years, but, you know, know the basics, get, get some value out of it. And there's a distinction between knowing it and practicing it or experimenting with it. And the same for the Enneagram. It's like, you know, there's there's some real gems in here, but just because you understand it doesn't mean that your life is going to change. Doesn't mean that you're going to get the results that you could get if you really stuck with it. So I think accountability is a really important piece for whatever tool that you're using to, to make sure that you do understand it and that you are actually using it. So seeking out an expert for that. And, you know, which kind of goes to my other tip. It's like all great leaders have coaches and mentors, every one of them. (laughs) And sometimes they have four or five or six of them. And so I think for people, you know, that are listening to this, that are concerned about progressing and um, living to their full potential, understanding what their potential is and stretching for it. Um, that they get support in that. And it's an investment straight up, you know, and whether, you know, what wherever they are in their career and really just be where you are. Don't try to change where you are. You got to land and be where you are and accept where you are. And it's like, okay. And so now what is it? What's your, what's your dream? What are you reaching for? Yeah. I think it's, it makes complete sense. And yet we sometimes just want to override it of like, I'm not, there for xyz reasons so therefore i don't have to and it's like if you look at the ceo of the largest companies they also have a board of directors if you look at government leadership even kings and queens there's some type of board of directors cabinet there's a council supporting them and so if the most royal if the richest ceos are doing it why shouldn't you and so my board of directors might not have some billionaires sitting on that list, but who are those people that are in your inner circle that are guiding you, advising you, giving you strategic things. And there's people that do that for your personal life. And then there's people that help you in your professional journey as well. And so building that group of people, whether it's coaches, mentors, advisors, just, you know, support you and help you actually achieve what you're looking to do. So amazing advice. And I think again, you know, that accountability piece you don't just get to like write down your goal in a notebook and shut it, but like who's making sure that you're going back in. And if you do kind of fall off the wagon because there was a busy day or a busy week, who's making sure that you get back back on and and continue moving forward. So two great points to share. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other advice that you want to share to listeners today? Um. I think it's important for people to remember that it takes a lot of strength and it takes a lot of courage to have have the entrepreneurial um, gene or not, but to 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 pursue your dreams, it takes a lot of courage and it takes a lot of strength and that we do have days where we've dropped our commitment. Or we have weeks where we've dropped our commitment and there's nothing wrong with recommitting, you know, and picking yourself back up. You know, people, what what people feel in their hearts and what they feel, you know, deep in their being that they would like to experience in this life, in their career, or how they'd like to contribute, that it matters. It really matters. And that that is their, you know, that's their song that they're here to sing. And so I just wanna 
remind people don't ever stop believing in yourself. Yeah, such such a beautiful reminder. I mean, regardless of you know what today might look like for you, what was last week, what was six months ago, and so to say the past is in the past, but like I'm going to recommit today and move forward from here. And so that's just you know always a great reminder. And then once you've made that commitment get the support you need, right? Build that community around you who's going to make sure that you continue um, moving forward. And you don't just fall off again, you know, two days later. So great things to remember. And so as people are like, okay, I know my human design, they probably Googled and found their chart in the time that they've been listening to this. They know that they can apply it to their professional growth and then take that kind of knowledge and connect with coaches, accountability partners, remembering that like they themselves have a lot of power to say, I give myself permission. I'm committed to moving forward. Um, I know you have a genius report summary that you're willing to give listeners today if they just email you. So I'll put the details of how they get that information, but I'd love for you to kind of share, you know, what that genius report would give them. Yeah, the genius report will um, lay out what um, the one that I will give them for free uh, talks about where they get their results, like where they put their energy to. Um, and I also actually will include a link to the videos that I've made that will explain it. Uh, some of the highlights of this report and also talking about, you know, how um you know, how do they, do they work best uh, alone or do they need a community? Uh, do they work best with a partner? And it doesn't mean like you can only do that, but it does, it does explain like, where are you going to get results? Some people do really, really well working alone and others don't. So if you're an entrepreneur or you're a freelancer and you're working alone, it's like, oh my God, my genius report says blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, let's, let's not be so rigid. Let's understand what, it, what do you need to build into your work life to amplify um, your results. And let's see what, there's a little bit about leadership. There's about what is motivating, like, you know, uh, Simon Sinek, you know, what's your why? Well, we actually have a description of what is your why? Like, why do you do things? Might not be exactly what he speaks about, but it's very individualized. And, you know, just some of your specific talents and skills. So all that's wrapped up in the one pager and also some videos to, help you break it down so people can, you know, in 10, 15 minutes, understand themselves a, a, about where they get the results and, and where do they fit, where they don't fit uh, in a short amount of time. Yeah, I think that's really awesome. So again, I'll put the directions in the show notes of how they can email you and kind of what info you need to pull that report. I know this summary that you're offering is a free kind of snapshot high level version. And so if you're like loving the one pager version, you could obviously connect with Natalie more to get the real report, get the full scope and have her spend some one-on-one -on -one time with you to unpack that further. Um, but again, I will drop her email address as well as the free genius report kind of details so that you can get that summary in your own inbox right away. Um, so Natalie, thank you so much for, for sharing your insights, your personal story and kind of how People can use human design in their own professional development. If listeners are like, this was great, I'm loving everything, you know, where can they find you to kind of soak up more of Natalie? What's the best place for them to kind of get more immersed in your world? Yeah, I think the best way is there. It got stopped. Yeah, the best way for people to find out more about me is my website, which is alignwithyourdesign.com, A-L-I-G-N, alignwithyourdesign.com. And if they want to just email me directly, it's Natalie, N-A-T-T-A-L-E-E, -E, and at the same address, alignwithyourdesign.com. Um, I have a YouTube channel that... Uh, there's some educational videos and some interviews and different things on my YouTube channel. 
And those are usually the two best ways, like quickly to, to get more information about me or to get in contact with me. Great, thank you. Um, and so as we're wrapping up this conversation, what is the one thing that you want people to remember you by? What's that message that you would share with the world? Um, I want people to remember what it's like when you hear truth mm. and how that feels in your body. And when you know something, you just know it and you don't need to explain anything. You just know, you know, truth when you hear it. Yeah, that's so powerful and definitely something for us to all kind of sit and ponder with as well, right? Like we all know what it's like to be lied to, but also like, how does it feel when you hear the truth? That's powerful. Love that. Thank you. All right. Well, I will drop, you know, your website, your YouTube channel, obviously a way for people to get their, you know, uh, genius report summary as well. But Natalie, thank you so much for being on the show today, for sharing your wisdom. Um, as much as I'm biased towards the Enneagram, I know there's so many powerful tools out there. And so thank you for coming on and sharing human design with us today. Thank you so much, Kristen. Really appreciate and enjoyed spending this time with you. Absolutely.